everyone. Welcome to the Inspired Method YouTube channel. And um, I'm here with Marie Claire Boothby from Australia, and she'll introduce herself. She's a dynamic business person in digital marketing involved out there helping small businesses of all types um, really grow on digital platforms. So today what we're going to be talking about is... G'day everybody. I had to throw the g'day in because it's from Australia, that's it. Yeah, so I am Mary Clay Boothby, like Trevor said. And I think today I want to highlight to everybody the importance of being an expert digital sales and marketer themselves. Ooh, that's good. Mm. I like that. So tell me, MC, when you are consulting with a business, what is some of the first things that you ask them or let them know that is important for them to understand? about digital marketing and about their business. Yeah. The, one of the first things is that they need to understand that they their core business, no matter how good they are at, at um, you know, service or a product and how good they are, their core business is that they are a sales and marketing business. Because mm. even if they have a great product or a great service, if they don't know how to sell, sell it or market it, they're going to go out of business. Mm. Now, that's been true forever, and yeah. any expert will tell you that. But in the modern era, right now, and for the last few years, and it's going to get harder and harder and bigger and bigger, we are now in the core business of digital sales and marketing. And it's becoming absolutely necess necessary to keep the doors open and to continue to thrive. Right. So when you say digital sales and marketing, what are some of the, the ways that you help businesses with their digital presence? Okay, so the first thing is to get them to understand that they have to focus on that. It's not something that they can just uh, outsource completely to somebody else. They need mm. to get involved in the process, they need to understand what is required from them because it's a two-way street. Right. You know, a, a digital marketer can't do everything on their own. They are not the brand. It's the right. passion and the brand of that person. So that's the first thing that we go through. So there's an education uh, process in that space. Um, and then it's about, okay, what? who is their target audience who's their okay. client avatar who are they looking to attract in, in the in their you know, sphere and a lot of times business owners don't understand the psychology of the person that's yeah. buying from them therefore oh, they right. they do this um I call them spray and pray methods. <laughs> you, I think I've probably yeah, seen very you familiar with that. Maybe yeah. you have even taught me that, but I've definitely picked it up. Um, and it's where you just advertise everywhere and anywhere to anyone, and then you you know so you spray the market, and then you pray that someone's going to call or that you're going to get a client out of it. And it just doesn't work these days. We're not listening in that way. Yeah. So it's about understanding the psychology of the buyer, and then using that to work out what your digital strategy is. Oh, okay. And so many businesses do not have a strategy whatsoever. And I find exactly the same thing. They don't understand the complexities of the digital space. And it's not that it's it's any different because you're still looking for your ideal and likely buyer and you're still providing a product or service to solve a problem for them. The only thing that has changed is the medium and how much you have to connect with that audience, right? So maybe you can talk a little bit about how there are different ways to connect with their buyers and how they can use uh, different platforms like say social media um, and their, their website to communicate to those buyers to start building that relationship. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's a really critical point about relationship. Um, it's, it's about first getting attention from that person so that they know who you are and then it's about nurturing them I mean it's very rare these days to close a deal especially if it's a big deal and there's mm -hmm. lots of dollars involved yeah. on day one and what a lot of people do in sales and marketing is that they we've talked about this before they try and um, close you or can you know send you a sales pitch before they've even met you or started talking to you, and that's yeah. online or not, it doesn't matter. So it's about, social media is about engaging with people, of expressing who you are so they get to know you, and taking you on a journey, which does take time. It's, it's no longer the, as I say, spray the market, pray that the phone's gonna ring. The phone doesn't ring anymore. People yeah. are connecting online. So 
uh, you mentioned like you know it's on the platforms or what it is that you would do yeah. in that space it's there are so many ways there's mm-hmm. so many ways for sure and it's about working out what strategy will work for you and I think it, it, different businesses probably need different things different industries mm-hmm. um, and yeah you certainly have a lot of experience in that space too yeah yeah I mean there's so many different ways that someone can communicate with their audience but it's really if you don't understand your business then you don't know your buyer if you don't know your buyer then you don't know how to talk to them if you don't know how to talk to them you can't get them to buy anything from you um, and that is one of the, the biggest hurdles that a lot of a lot of companies just don't seem to, to get and understand and like you mentioned with the spray and pray we just sat down with somebody a couple of weeks ago and he had spent I don't know what he spent he had tens of thousands of dollars send out 60,000 flyers in the mail and he got four responses zero sales and I hear that time and time and again. it happens way too often because why they don't understand their ideal and likely buyer and they don't know how people are communicating so in today's digital age and all the platforms that we have people are looking online first before they look anywhere else we've said it time and time again um, over 80% of people are looking to Google, they're looking to Yelp, they're looking to different platforms for some advice and some, some hints as to whether you're a reputable company. Do you have good social standing? Are you taking, or do you do what you say you can do and how have you interacted with other people? So getting that social proof and that um, understanding that you are a reputable company because other people are saying so, if you're not doing that, if you're not putting effort and energy towards doing that, you're going to fail. You're going to close your business because more and more people are relying on digital for answers. So you got to provide answers. So what is some of the, the favorite ways that you use mm-hmm. to expand your own brand? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so the number one thing for me, mm-hmm. and it's a real hot topic at the moment, is Facebook Lives. Okay. So... Uh, I remember saying last year that I could count on one hand the number of people in my region mm-hmm. that were doing Facebook Lives, yeah. and I'm happy to say that now I can probably count on my hands and my toes, but that's still <laughs> not a big number. And no. for that reason alone is when you need to do it yourself, because if mm-hmm. not many other people are doing it, there's that scarcity approach. Um, so therefore, that's my number one thing. And there's a, there's a whole a whole heap of other reasons as well. Um, Facebook Lives is interruption marketing. Um, it allows you to be authentic and sh- you know, really share your personal brand, mm-hmm. warts and all, um, and that's actually the best way because people don't like polished salespeople anymore. They mm-hmm. like it when you stumble over a few words and you yourself. Um, then it's also entertaining for them and they're like, oh, maybe I can do that too. Um, it just shows that authority, so that's another reason. But also because Facebook, it's built on engagement. That's yeah. that's what they want. They want people to comment. And what better way when you're communicating with your audience um, and you're answering questions or responding to comments in a live environment, that encourages people that you can't help it. Like, watch a live yourself yeah. and work out and say, oh, I want to. I actually want to comment on this. So you'll start typing. You just can't help it. You get drawn into the conversation. Yeah. Perfect marketing. Like, oh. and it's free. It, for now. Free. It won't be forever. No. Maybe. So you do it. Do it now. And it's. Yeah. It's easy, but it's hard. So you've got to really just do it. Yeah, and it, it's really because people are looking for information. So if you are answering questions, like having a Q and A, yeah, would be so powerful, either in a live environment or even doing a Q and A that's recorded. Absolutely. Answering people's questions about your brand, about your product, about your service, because they're looking for answers. They're looking online, and if you're providing it for them, are they going to go somewhere else? Probably not. They're going to be looking to you because you started providing that information for free. Like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk in his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, give, 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 and then you can ask for a sale. You can consummate the deal only when you started building that relationship with another person. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing that, that I feel that a lot of marketers and a lot of people don't understand is building a relationship with another person. There's a person on the other side of the screen right. that is watching you. There's a person on the other side of that thing that's going to exchange money for services or money for yep. products. And you can't just go in and steal it from them and pull it out of their pocket and you know scam them out of money. You have to gain trust. Yeah. You have to establish expertise and authority and trustworthiness before someone is going to consummate the deal with you. So do you have any parting words for us or anything you can share um, about building relationships? Yeah, well, 
and I don't remember the exact stats, but I remember um, some time ago it used to be that you had to have 10 touch points points okay. with a person before they made a decision to buy, um, especially the high ticket item. Nowadays, with the digital world and the way we behave on, on our phones more than anything, yeah. it's more like 30 touch points that you have to have before they make a, a decision. And wow. correct me if I'm wrong, but the numbers are a lot higher now than it yeah. used to be. But the good news with that is you can absolutely make that happen with digital marketing because mm. you don't have to do a lot in, to get 30 touch points. You That's know, right. A couple of different platforms and a couple of connections through mm. whatever um, email or messenger, whatever it might be, and you can rack it up pretty quickly and gain that trust, um, show that you are an expert, and then when it's time to for them to make a decision, a buying decision, like you said, who they're going to call, who they're going to contact online probably through Facebook or Instagram or, or <laughs> like an instant message or email <laughs> yeah. or pick up the phone and do those weird things maybe come into your store Ooh, coffee. weirdos <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> psychopaths right yeah Sorry about that. <laughs> anyways thank you so much MC for your time today we Thanks appreciate it on. no problem we're glad to have you again sometime <laughs> definitely and uh, we'll see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up we'll see you guys next time bye